Now in my previous video I described how I got the Arduino IDE to understand 80 mega 32 chips and to be able to program them without a bootloader using USB ASP these programmers or to use that to put a bootloader in so that it could be fitted with an, a serial adapter and programmed in the usual way like all other Arduinos. I tried a number of methods these things seem to be called cores, I'm not really sure where that term comes from but all the ones I tried didn't work or at least the way that they said to use them if I did it correctly, didn't work and yeah, the only thing I found was a thing called Mighty Core and even that one if you did the manual installation like all the others used uh, it didn't work only using its automated installation could I get anything to operate <coughs> now that might be that so all these things were pretty old like several years so perhaps uh, something's changed in Arduino that busts that way of using it or I just did it wrong I don't know so I was advocating Mighty Core but simply because it worked not for no other reason in fact there's a few things about it I don't like but yeah, I just want to show you a little bit about, clarify a bit about how the Arduino IDE folders are, st are structured and how uh, these other methods told you to install them and uh, what Mighty Core seems to have done. And I'll show you some rather weird and I think silly things that Mighty Core has done. We'll go to the screen. Uh, I'm going to try and explain a bit better than I did in the previous video on uh, what happens with these updates to Arduino to enable it to use these other chips. If we look at the standard installation of Arduino, yeah, I've, in, I've installed Arduino under this folder, Arduino IDE, rather than program files, just so I can find it a bit more easily. And Previously, you were able to put keep multiple versions of Arduino, so I had them all under that folder, but the last couple of versions have insisted that you delete previous versions, uninstall them first, which I don't like, anyway. If we look at this, so I've got Arduino 1.8.13, that's the latest one. There's a hardware folder underneath that, within that Arduino, within that AVR, and in that folder, there's these three files, and boards.txt is where most of these implementations of installing 18 mega XX support goes so you, you can see there's a sec section for yun there and, and there's a section for every different like uno there there's a second nano there's a section for each uh, particular Arduino board and if you look at any of them there'll be a dot build dot variant equals yun which refers to this folder yun underneath variants and all these folders have just a single file in them pins.arduino.h if we look at for instance uno his build variant is standard so it's referring to this folder and then this stuff will be included and this defines everything that Arduino needs to know about the processor and the board. To make Arduino understand about 18 mega 32 for instance you have to have another Arduino.h in some folder under variants and you need to add an entry in boards.txt with all these types of a group you have to add a group of entries in boards.txt with these sorts of information and one of them would be dot build dot variant equals something you know, maybe say m32 and then you'd have a, a variance folder called m32 and the mighty core manual installation does something similar but all these manual installations I couldn't get them to work and I suspect it's just because something's changed in Arduino but or I just screwed it up a bit. I screwed it up multiple times <laughs> I reinstalled Arduino fresh each time I tried but anyway uh, so Arduino builds this directory obviously when you install it but it also creates entries in the registry and it puts some stuff elsewhere on your computer in your users directory so if we have a look at that under the users folder 
I've got a user called Bert and within that there's an app data folder local and then there's an Arduino 15 folder and that is another part of your hard disk that Arduino keeps stuff and I think all your preferences and libraries and things get stored in this and it's possible to mess around with this and uh, get yourself in a knot where um, Arduino won't even load and the way to fix that is I forget exactly what I did to get in that situation but deleting this folder clears the clears the problem and it seems to return Arduino back to as if you just freshly installed it. Within that Arduino folder there's a packages and within that that's where Mighty Core installs itself and then it has more subfolders going down to here where we have a boards.txt and a variance down here. Uh, boards.txt contains similar but different information to the other boards.txt rather than for specific boards this has entries for specific processes in that 40 pin dip family so for instance uh, where's 3 to 8 yeah 80 mega 32 sorry there is a variant entry in here somewhere yeah build the, yeah there's one for Bobduino standard and Sanguino those three different variants with different uh, pinouts if you like so there's a dot build dot variant standard and Bobduino and Sanguino. When you install Mighty Core automatically, this gets set up. I'm not. I haven't discovered yet how. Let's fire up Arduino. I haven't yet worked out how they managed to make this dual level menu before all this stuff under standard was at this level, not not at the second level. And all that stuff there comes from the boards.txt in the original Arduino directory because platform.txt is involved as well in programs. This file is actually being used. If I change that so that it's now got this in there and then bounce out Arduino, tools, board, and you can see it's got that nonsense in there. So it is still using this boards.txt in the original location and somehow it's pushed that into the second level menu and this boards.txt is also added as a second level menu if we go to tools board uh, the mighty core there's the variants in, listed in this boards.txt as I said there's some things I don't like about mighty core and here's one of them look at this if we look at bootloaders in the standard IDE, we've just got a few entries, there's and there's a hex file for each of them, several hex versions. If we go to the Mighty Core stuff installed in the Arduino 15 directory and look at bootloaders, we've got optiboot.flash. So I don't know if what I'm about to show you is an optiboot thing or a Mighty Core thing, but it came with Mighty Core. Optiboot, bootloaders, and then there's one for every type of chip pretty much every type of AVR chip if I go to 80 mega 32 oh there it is okay inside that we've then got a folder for a whole bunch of different possible crystal clock frequencies if I go to the 8 meg one which is what those uh, minimum system boards I've got have or one of them has then there's a whole bunch of hex files for different board rates and if we go up to bootloaders here and then go asterisk dot hex look at this number down the bottom eight thousand nine hundred ninety two there are nearly nine thousand hex files for every possible combination of mega chip crystal frequency and board rate and I think that's a bit ridiculous but anyway I just I thought that was interesting something else I wanted to mention look say uh, at the original uh, Arduino stuff here, here. boards.txt now in here it's always annoyed me a little bit that if you go to tools board and then all the standard stuff. There's all these things that, well, I've, I've never used. 
I've used Uno and Nano and Mini and Mega. And supposing I don't want to see any of this other stuff. Well, there's a way to do it. You can put an entry in boards.txt. You can put an entry in there. Yun.hide equals anything. doesn't matter what you put in after the equal sign. Just the fact that there's yun.hide equals makes it not show the entry for yun in that menu. And you don't even have to put entries like that in this file. In fact, for boards and platform and programmers, for all of them, you can have a boards.local.txt or platform.local.txt which will override or yeah it'll override whatever's in the in the default boards.txt so you can have another file that just says uh, yun.hide equals blah blah another one for something else a dot hide for all of those and then I'll only have a few variants in my menu and I I've got one I prepared earlier up here I'll copy that to here rename it and in there you see I've got hide commented out the hides for the ones I do want to see hash sign is a comment so uno nano mega pro now this this is some of the stuff that was in from other attempts to try to uh, install support for these things I won't bother deleting it but if we now bounce Arduino and go to the sub menu for the standard boards. We've got only those ones I wanted out of boards.txt, and I forgot to get rid of these. So yeah, that's that's a, another thing you can do if you, if you want to reduce clutter. So you can reduce clutter by the hide entries up here. You can avoid modifying standard Arduino files by a dot local version you can get rid of Arduino problems sometimes by deleting this folder Arduino 15 so they're, they're the tips I wanted to pass on uh, I hope that makes it a little bit clearer than the stumbling around in the dark I did in the previous video so let, let's actually look at what happens when you delete that Arduino 15 folder uh, and to help illustrate it I'll set a few options in if I go to file preferences and then say well make those not ticked and put more in there for instance there's the URL to install mighty core and just remember how that was and how boards looked we have that there and that there and now I'll close that and delete this Arduino 15 folder nine and a half thousand items remember that boards.local text in the standard Arduino location is still there so the hiding will still happen but when I fire up Arduino again now it's forgotten what sketch we had we look in preferences this is gone and the URL for Mighty Core is gone if we look at boards there's just the original stuff but the hiding is still in, in effect because of that boards.local let's put Mighty Core back in when I unzipped uh, Mighty Core into, I stored it in this folder up here under Gizmos. There's the zip and extracted it to this folder here, Mighty Core Master. And if we go to, in the, yeah, in the root directory, down around here somewhere is the automated installation. Yeah, there. I'll just grab that URL. I'll go to Arduino, into the file preferences paste that there can't do right click control V yep there it is okay and press OK and then we go to tools boards manager and it starts downloading stuff and at the end we should see mighty core and I'll just say install that Arduino 15 folder is back with packages, with Mighty Core, with hardware, with AVR, with its Brazilian bootloaders. <laughs> if we look at that, 15 or 16 levels deep, which is bloody ridiculous. 
And now that that's done, if we go go back to Arduino, close that, tools, board, and we've got that second level business again. And we've still got this name and the other things hidden because boards.txt wasn't altered, that was in the standard Arduino location. I only deleted this Arduino 15 folder out of the users folder. So that's how you install Mighty Core to get support for AT Mega32 and other 40 pin DIP AVRs. I hope you found that mildly informative. Uh, I was trying to clarify what I'd done in the previous video because I had uh, a lot of the screen cut off that I didn't realise. Um, so what I've just shown you hopefully clarifies a lot of what I tried to show yesterday. Catch you later.